The Warriors 2022 playoff run has told us one thing. They're a two-way force to be reckoned with. The Splash Brothers, including the pool party, will rightfully get all the attention, but Toronto-born Andrew Wiggins becoming an elite wing stopper and Golden State's clamps as a team overall are winning elements that deserve more attention. With two-way wigs, the DPOY and Dre, an outstanding rim protector in Kevon Looney, and another weapon with a 7-foot-plus wingspan in Otto Porter Jr., this defense looks damn intimidating. Forcing Luka Doncic to commit four third-quarter turnovers, the young superstar also had his worst shooting night of the 2022 playoffs. The Dubs snatched 15 steals in total, and on the other end, put on a clinic sharing the basketball. Steve Kerr nicely mixed up his defensive sets, whether it was his 1-2-2 zones, box and ones, or strong side overloading to stop isolations. Here's an in-depth look at how Golden State stunned Dallas to kick off the Western Conference Finals. Before continuing, only 11% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. Lastly, stay updated on the NBA and the channel by following me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The most underrated part about Stephen Curry, Klay Thompson, and now Jordan Poole, who are all known for their bucket getting, are their abilities to get down in a defensive stance and clamp up their matchups. Specifically Curry's ball pressure, screen navigation, and lateral movement, which is fueled by his all-out hustle, goes completely overlooked. As the team's number one option, and debatably the best offensive player in the NBA, drawing double and triple teams every possession, yet still being effective, Steph giving the effort he does defensively doesn't give anyone else even close to an excuse to take a possession off. With that said, legitimately setting the tone on this end of the court is Draymond Green, whose infamously swift rotations, which you'll see an in-depth breakdown on coming up, significantly bothered Dallas in Game 1. As the primary defender, Green held the Mavericks to 4 for 15 shooting overall and 0 for 9 from 3 point range. That 0 for 9 mark from Jason Kidd's team is tied for the third most misses against a single defender from deep since ESPN began tracking playoff games in 2013 14. Dominant stuff from the best defender that likely any of us, at least those of us who weren't old enough to appreciate Dennis Rodman, will ever witness in real time. The Warriors held Luka Doncic to a playoff low 16.7% uncontested field goals. He had the same amount of turnovers on Wednesday night as he did in games 5, 6, and 7 combined against Phoenix. The Warriors' top guy Steph Curry entered this series with averages of 29.6 points, 6.3 rebounds, 5.8 assists on 64.2% true shooting in 27 conference finals games. He's already solidified himself as one of the greatest playoff performers of all time. Curry posted 21 points, 12 boards, and 4 dimes in Game 1. That rebound total was his most in a playoff outing since 2019, yet another underrated quality in Curry's bag. Contributing to the gang rebounding and utterly active defensive tendencies of this team, my fellow Torontonian and former number one pick Andrew Wiggins is proving how valuable a change of scenery can be for a player in the association. Providing this Warrior team with an elite two-way wing with his wingspan and shooting out on the perimeter, Air Canada perfectly fits in with the Warriors personnel and culture. To help shockingly neutralize Doncic, Wiggins used every bit of his reach, muscle, and footwork to keep Luka in front of him at all costs. The caliber of Wiggins' focus on clamping Doncic was shown off by how high his pickup point was, at times nearly three quarters of the court. In terms of the Warriors' defense as a whole, their most mind-blowing stance in Game 1 was the one on your screen right now, which ended the opening frame. Initially guarded by Draymond Green right here, Spencer Dinwiddie attempts to get the slower Looney on him, but Kevon doesn't fold, constantly keeps his feet moving, and watch how Draymond baits Dinwiddie into giving it up, leaving Dorian Finney-Smith alone. He points to the corner to make Curry aware of a possible pin-in screen by Frank Nielakina, and proceeds to stay in the paint to shadow a potential drive. Despite Dinwiddie perfectly matching up his kick out to the corner with Nielakina's screen for Finney-Smith, Green reads the pass, and rotates out to the corner for a signature closeout block. That gave the Warriors a ton of momentum heading into the second quarter. 
When the Mavs' high-volume creators, whether it was Doncic, Dinwiddie, or Brunson, tried the classic bully ball approach in the low post, the Warriors packed the paint with defenders, showing security from the elbows and at the top of the key, and they also had the low man pinch in from the weak side, which is known as strong side overloading. Then the Warriors changed up their game plan to a strategy that helps them slow down the pace of the game, a 1-2-2 zone. Dallas didn't match the physicality of that defensive set and failed to punch back. They didn't drive to the middle for open looks, which is something you have to do in any attempt to counter a zone. Their offense just looked really stagnant as well. It was a ton of isos and not too much trust of each other and rotating the ball from side to side. Even a box and one defensive set was on the table for the Warriors on a couple possessions, once used by my Raptors as the villain to Steph Curry in 2019's finals. Steve Kerr has made the box and one a commonly used strategy. In terms of switching, if Kevon Looney got placed on an island against Luka, the Warriors trusted Looney enough to keep Doncic in front, and that paid off as they lured Luka into some deep range bombs off the bounce that the Warriors have to live with. Scoping out mismatches was expected to be the Mavericks' best option, but you could tell the Warriors were very prepared for that. Per 36 minutes over his past five games, the unsung hero Kavon 99 Hands Looney won't get the credit in the mainstream media, but in his last five games, he's averaging 10 points, 15 rebounds, 5 assists on 67% from the field, 100% from the charity stripe, and he's a plus 20. Voting well for you if you're a Warrior fan, Golden State's won 13 straight best of 7 series after winning game 1. That's the fourth longest streak in NBA history and the second longest active streak behind the Lakers, according to ESPN Stats and Info. But I want to know in your opinion, who's Golden State's Conference Finals X Factor? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is TJ Views who says, this is a really tough answer, but I feel like either the Celtics or the Heat can win in six or seven games. Those two teams seem like home court can help them out with momentum to help them do well in this Eastern Conference Finals. Both of these teams are hungry to win the NBA championship. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlo signing off.